what I am about to reveal, I am revealing primarily for history. I know even before I reveal it that some of my listeners will desert me after they hear it, saying, it just cannot be. But my friends, I also know that the events in the days ahead will be impossible to understand without knowing this secret. So I do not ask that you believe it simply because I say it. What I do ask, and I ask it for your own good, is that you keep an open mind. Listen and hear what I must now reveal, then watch events themselves. My friends, since World War II and before, scientists the world over have been probing for the basic secrets of life itself. It has now been over a quarter century since the crucial discovery of the DNA double helix. Test tube babies are now a reality, and that began not long ago in England where the mystery of DNA was first unraveled. Then of course there are clones, that is, creatures which are reproduced by artificial means and which are exact duplicates of an original. Clones of all kinds of animals have been produced successfully in the laboratory, but that is not what bothers people. In the recent past it has been claimed that human clones are also possible and that some may already be in existence. These last claims about human clones have been ridiculed, denied, and suppressed by all kinds of officials. The reason is that the idea of duplicate human beings impinges upon a super-secret realm of intelligence activities by both Russia and the United States. True clones are not involved, but something that bears a superficial resemblance to cloning is going on. And the last thing the powers that be want is for you and the public to have any hint about what is afoot. In Russia as well as in the West, research has been underway for many years in biological synthesis, that is, artificial life forms. And according to high intelligence, a stunning breakthrough took place in Russia some years ago. The Russians refer to this breakthrough as a providential discovery, something they learned almost by accident. They discovered the key to creating what are known as organic robotoids. An organic robotoid is an artificial robot-like creature. It looks and acts exactly like a human being, and yet it is not human. A robotoid is alive in a biological sense, but it is an artificial life form. Robotoids respond to conventional routine medical tests in the same way as humans do. They eat, they drink, they breathe, they bleed if cut, and they can be killed. Robotoids can also think, but they think only in the sense that a computer thinks. Like any other computer, the brain of a robotoid has to be programmed for each assignment it is given. But unlike many electronic computers, the biological computer brain of a robotoid possesses an enormous memory. As a result, robotoids can be programmed to communicate and think in such complex patterns that they act human. Organic robotoids are remarkable creatures, but they have many drawbacks. They don't grow or reproduce, but must be manufactured one by one in the desired form. They also have a very limited lifespan, measured in months or even weeks depending upon how they are utilized. This is due to the fact that their metabolism, while it resembles that of humans, is very inefficient. A robotoid can be manufactured on very short notice, a matter of hours, but after a few weeks or months it suddenly begins to degenerate physically and mentally. When that takes place, the robotoid has to be removed from service and disposed of. To extend its useful life as much as possible, a robotoid is customarily cooled down to slow its metabolism between assignments. Organic robotoids are extremely expensive, troublesome creatures to produce and utilize, and robotoid capabilities do not exceed those of human beings. All they can really do is simulate human beings, but my friends, for intelligence purposes that's all they have to do. To produce an organic robotoid it is necessary to have a pattern to go by, 
The pattern required is that of genetic coding taken from a few cells from the body of a human being. In this respect, the Russian technique sounds like cloning, but the technique itself is totally unrelated to genuine cloning. A robotoid is produced within a matter of hours, and it simulates the human donor at his current age. Like any man-made copy of anything, a robotoid is never a perfect copy of the human that is to be simulated. There's always small discrepancies in appearance and behavior, but these are seldom great enough to arouse any suspicion. Last month I revealed that the Russians can manufacture organic robotoids, which are almost exact carbon copies of real human beings. This is done by a process that simulates the genetic coding of the person to be copied. It sounds a little like cloning, but it's not. A clone of a human would itself be a human, but an organic robotoid is not human. It's an artificial life form, like an animal in some ways, but like a computerized machine in others. Every Russian robotoid has what is called a holographic brain. This brain duplicates essentially the entire memory of a person being copied. The key to doing this is a new technique called an ultrasonic cerebral hologram. Using high-frequency sound waves, which are inaudible, a complete three-dimensional picture is made of a person's brain. This is a painless, non-destructive process and under the proper conditions it can be done without the person even being aware of it. Last month I revealed that the Russians are using Nelson Rockefeller's hit list to weed out Bolsheviks here in America, and for roughly three years they have been preparing for this day. They have been secretly making cerebral holograms of the people on the list at every opportunity. This has been done to every person on Rockefeller's list who has visited Russia or Eastern Europe in the past three years. When an organic robotoid is made to simulate, for example, our late President Jimmy Carter, two major factors are involved. One is the genetic coding required to simulate Carter's appearance, voice, fingerprints, and so on. The other is a holographic image of Carter's brain. This image is a complete record of the neuron patterns which existed in Carter's brain at the moment the hologram was made. Therefore, it contains all of the memory and knowledge Carter had up to that moment. When a Carter robotoid is made, the biological computer in its head is caused to form according to the holographic record of Carter's brain. However, certain portions of the robotoid computer are caused to deviate from the holographic record. Uh, the end result is a biological computer which has to be programmed but which contains essentially all of Carter's memory, involuntary mannerisms, and the like. As a result, a Carter robotoid will automatically do certain kinds of things without the need for specific programming. For example, a Carter robotoid will seem to recognize old friends. That's because the computer memory of the robotoid reproduces Carter's memory of that friend. The holographic process puts it there automatically without the Russian programmers even having to know it's there. Organic robotoids are such amazing creatures that they are still a subject of questioning and debate. This is true even among the Russian scientists who made them a reality. For example, robotoids seem to have no true instinct for self-preservation. In this regard, they act like machines, simply doing as they are told to do. By contrast, both humans and animals generally have the instinct for self-preservation. Robotoids can be programmed for self-preservation, but they are equally willing, if willing is the word, to perform suicide missions, exploratory one-way trips into space are only one example of this. If a space mission looks too dangerous to risk the life of an experienced cosmonaut, a robotoid can now be used. The robotoid copy of the cosmonaut is already trained the moment it's made thanks to its holographic memory. Organic robotoids look and act so much like human beings 
that it's hard for us to get used to the idea that they are not human. But the Russians decided several months ago that the stakes are too high not to employ them, and so the silent Russian invasion of America by robotoids is now well underway. As of now, the White House and Cabinet are under complete control by Russia. According to my latest intelligence report, only one member of the Carter Cabinet is still alive. All the rest, including the ad hoc gang of four, have been replaced by Russian robotoids. Likewise, the United States now has a Supreme Court made up of nine Russian robotoids. 